The Kremlin will step up its aggression against Ukraine in the coming months, including resuming strikes on energy infrastructure facilities and may also attempt to assassinate the Ukrainian leadership. This statement was made by the former head of the Ukrainian Foreign Ministry, Vadim Pristaiko, whose words are quoted by The Economist. They will try to do something. They will destroy the energy system. They will try to kill the leadership, the former minister said. In his opinion, the next three months will be terrible. Increasing aggression may be a way of negotiating for Russian dictator Vladimir Putin after Donald Trump was elected US president. The publication writes that Trump may be impressed by Putin's style of governance and Ukrainian leader Volodymyr Zelensky may face two possible outcomes, defeat or dead end, since it is unclear how exactly the US president-elect intends to fulfill his promise to quickly end the war in Ukraine given during the election campaign. Journalists admit that even Trump himself may not know what his plan is. The article states that the Ukrainian authorities are working with two options for ending the war, voiced by Trump's entourage. The first option is to freeze the war along the current front lines and force Kiev into neutrality. It was voiced by J.D. Vance, whom Trump wants to be his vice president. The second option was voiced by Mike Pompeo, who served as Secretary of State during Trump's first term. This option, as the publication notes, suits Kiev better since it provides for increased military and financial assistance to Ukraine to contain the Kremlin's aggressive intentions and also preserves the prospect of the Ukrainian state joining NATO. Meanwhile, Bloomberg writes, Trump made it clear that he cannot simply push Ukraine to make concessions to Putin without receiving anything in return. The Guardian writes that Trump's rise to power is unpredictable. It is impossible to predict with certainty how the Republican will behave on the issue of the war between Kiev and Moscow. Judging by his previous statements, he may force the warring countries to the negotiating table. There are four points that Russian dictator Vladimir Putin will likely present to Ukraine and Trump as conditions for ending the war. This is the result he can present to his own population as a victory. The Guardian recalled that back in 2022, Putin had already appropriated four Ukrainian regions and Crimea on paper, including those territories that his army did not control. He will probably insist that Ukraine give them back to him, including the regional centers of Kherson and Zaporizhia. Another requirement could be the so-called buffer zone. This is the withdrawal by Ukraine of serious weapons from the borders of the Russian Federation and the occupied territories. The third condition is reparations for the destruction of the occupied Donbass. And the last thing in Ukraine's refusal to join NATO and return to neutral status. All this would be unacceptable for Kiev and the majority of Ukrainians, the article says. A crowd of mourners lit torches and intoned a military chant to honor a Ukrainian medic and a soldier who fell in love while on the front lines of the war and died together in a Russian shelling attack. The funeral took place Friday at Kiev's crematorium, a cavernous and grimly modern building often used for funerals of the war dead. Valentina Nahorna, whose call sign was Valkyria, volunteered as a medic at the start of the war. She and Daniil Lyashkevich, known as Berserk, fell in love just a few months ago, their friends and comrades said, but it helped them endure the war. They both worked in the 3rd Assault Brigade, and were killed November 4. Those gathered gave the chant that Ukrainian soldiers learn by heart when they first start training, burn with fire, life-giving, the weakness in my heart. Let me know no fear, nor doubt. Kostil, who like many Ukrainian soldiers agreed to be identified only by his call sign, said meeting Valkyrie helped Berserk emerge from a dark time in his life. He finally had a soulmate who also wanted to fight with him and be as close to the war as possible, but this was their last time together, and no one is safe from that, Kostil said. Dvyachnik, a 3rd Brigade soldier who knew the medic better than her soldier companion, described her as fearless and willing to learn anything. She was very genuine, regardless of who was talking to her, whether it was a colonel or a company commander, he said. She was very sincere and real with everyone and I will miss her very much. Що 
щоб зросла за взяттям міст. Вона, вона була дуже справжня, незалежно від того, хто з нею говорить, чи це якийсь буде полковник, чи це якийсь буде ротний, вона з усіма дуже щира і справжня. І... Мені буде дуже не вистачати. А ще вона завжди з таким, була з неймовірною долею авантюризму, з криками. Я це не вмію, але я десь за добу цього навчусь. А цього буде дуже бракувати.